Um, but this is a film uh, called Shrek. It's about an ogre. And, um, and basically there's a story of uh, him and his swamp that he likes to live in and uh, the friendship that he, he gains with Donkey and uh, the quest that he goes on. And, uh, and so I've chosen this film, although it's quite an old film now, it's about 20, 21 years since its making. The, this is the first of the Shreks. There are four Shreks altogether, uh, four movies. And my understanding is there's a fifth coming out. So I'm excited about that. But this one is all really about friendship. And so today I want to talk about friendship and how um, it's the importance of friendship, some of the keys to friendship. Again, I had that many clips that I wanted to, to show. Um, and I've kind of just narrowed them down and then keep trying to narrow them down and narrow them down. So we've got down to about 50, no, about down to... <laughs> Uh, six or seven clips um, that, that we're going to show. So um, we'll just show them and then I'll chat a little bit about them uh, as we go, yes? So Shrek is the main, uh, the main character with that and uh, he is uh, the voice, the narrator is um, Mike Myers and the donkey is Eddie Murphy and uh, they, them two really are spectacular in the way that they put the voice over and they're putting it together. Now, one of the trivias that I understand about this film is that anybody that, uh, that was working on, their, on the, the films, if they didn't do a very good job, then they put them on Shrek. So it was kind of like, it was seen as like punishment detail. Well, all I can say is that it was absolutely fabulous, and uh, I'd recommend the movie uh, to that. So Shrek is a delightful uh, comedy about a crude ogre, an energetic princess, a witty donkey, and an uptight ruler. Donkey makes friends with ogre, uh, with Shrek. And, um, and he does that even though Shrek doesn't want to be friends. Shrek is always shrugging off anybody, any kind of relationships. And um, he just has it all the way through the film is that sense that everybody has a problem with him. And, uh, but, but we all need friends. And I think it's important to understand that from a biblical perspective, the scripture is very clear that we need each other. We need to be friends. We need to make friends. We need to be a friend. We need to be friendly. Uh, we need to spend time working at our friendship, it doesn't just come naturally, it didn't just kind of, I know some people think, oh, it's easy for them. Actually, I find that for all of us, we have to work on our friendships. And, um, and we certainly need some long-term friendships uh, in our life that, that are with us through thick and thin. Romans 15 and verse 5 says this, says, may God develop maturity in you so that you get along with each other as well as Jesus gets along with us all. In other words, for us to grow spiritually, we need each other. We need each other to become mature and uh, help each other through life. Now, the key, of course, is to accept each other unconditionally. And that's a big ask. That's a big thing for us because we often want people to be friends, but we have conditions to that, we, whether we like people or uh, whether they kind of fit into our circle of, uh, of people that maybe network with us or they, they like what we like or whatever. But Romans 15 and verse 7 says this, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you. Jesus has accepted us just as we are. We don't need to change to become a Christian. Jesus says, just come as you are and then God works on us. It's just like when you get married and your wife accepts you as you are, and then spends the rest of your life changing you, <laughs> working on you. Yes, a little bit like that. Um, but to be serious, that's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to work on us. He wants to change us. But he, he wants us to come as we are. He accepts us as we are. Uh, there's no kind of rules or regulations that says you have to um, become this or stop doing this beforehand. He says, wherever and wherever you are, whatever your situation is, in life, and so friends are people who love at all times, um, and that is important for us to do. That it's not I love you if, or I love you because, 
but it's a case of I love you whatever uh, is the situation, whatever you're going through, whatever are the quirks, whatever are the difficulties of it. In other words, you're a good egg, even if you are a little bit cracked. And so however we are, God wants us, and we need to be the same as God accepts us. We need to accept other people just the same. Yes, because friendships are the bedrock to life, the, the bedrock to ministry. When we do ministry together as a church, whatever is that, whether it's, as I've talked about, the PA, we call them teams. Why? Because they, uh, they are in it together. They are they're like family together. They're working on the same purpose. They are, there's a friendship there. It's not a case of just coming and doing, I do my bit and you do your bit and no kind of uh, conversation. But there's actually, there's a camaraderie. There's a friendship. There's a love bond uh, between us. Same with the, the children's team that this morning, uh, they do the same. They're, they're working tirelessly and as friends together, uh, to be able to, to do that. It's not good for us to be alone. God designed us to be in relationship. And so that's what church is about, is building healthy relationships. Well, this next scene starts um, just after um, Shrek's, uh, it is swamp, he's had a host of, uh, of fairy tale creatures that have, that have been ousted out of where they lived uh, and so they've come to, the, to his swamp. And of course, Shrek's not happy about this. He wants to be on his own. And so he sets off um, uh, in order to be able to get his swamp back. He's going to go uh, to Lord uh, Farquhar, I think is how they call it, uh, uh, Far Farquad, maybe, in order for us to actually to have a purpose together. In other words, it's not just about saying, I'm your friend and we... Uh, we, we sit down and just have kind of coffee together. It's not just about uh, loitering together. It's not just being in the same room together. Because if that would be the case, then just by being in here, we would say we have lots of friends. But actually, we are to be friends on a quest. And I say that because Jesus came to earth with a quest. And his quest was for a bride. His quest was for a princess. And we, as the church, are his princess. And just as Shrek was going, was sent on a quest uh, to free Princess Fiona uh, uh, from, the, from the tower that she's in and the dragon that's, that's, uh, that's protecting her and keeping her hemmed in and stopping anybody else being able to, uh, to free her. So we got, the same analogy is that Jesus came to free us so that we could be in his family so that we could be his church, so that we could be his bride. And so just as Jesus was on a quest, for, he had a mission, so you and I are on a quest. So and I, when we give our life to Jesus, I've got a mission to accomplish. And it's not a mission that's just for us uh, to be able to say, okay, I'm a Christian now when I tell other people about Jesus. But it's about having friendships, close friendships, as a team together, so that we understand that church and Christianity is not about us individually. In other words, we are not here for, 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 for you. We are here to put you to work. The whole aspect of the church is that each person understands that we are on a quest. We are all on the same quest. We're on the same mission. Now, that works out and looks different for, for all of us. But the key is that you and I have been put together to work together on God's team, in God's family, in God's bride, as God's princess collectively together to accomplish that mission. We're on a mission. We're on a quest to see people brought into the church. Amen? That's what we've got to do. There is, uh, I don't know if you've heard many a time, uh, the, the Chinese proverb that if you want to go fast, you go alone. You can run alone faster than you can with other people. But if you want to go far, if you want to stay on the journey long term, then you need to go with other people. You need to go uh, 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 you know, and have other friends and people along with you. Amen? And so that's so important about us. It's about us serving the purposes of God in our generation. This church exists to put each one of you to work.
each one of you to understand the quest that God has called you to. And the quest is, that, is for each one of us to be a part of the work, to, uh, to help us as a church to reach the thousands upon thousands of people in Teesside. That's what every church is about, is about reaching people for Jesus. That's the quest that we have. That's why our friendships, that's why we are friends together. That's why we come together as a church. We don't just come to, together as a church, and you should never come to church because of what it's in for you. You're in church because of what it is for the, the mission of God. We are here for God. We are belong to God. He paid the price. He bought us. He's the one that went on the quest for us and was willing to sacrifice everything for us. He died for his church. He died for his princess. We belong to him. And that's what our goal is as a, as, as a, as a church, to be on God's quest. Amen. You know, when team players are on and people are truly friends, that they believe in the team. They support the team. They talk positively about the team. They don't try to slag other members of the team. They don't try to sabotage the team. Because we've got to understand that divided, we fall. But united, we stand strong together. Amen? Two are better than one in every situation. And... It's important for us to understand that our emotions is one of our layers in our life. And if we want to really have close friends, we've got to be vulnerable. We've got to, uh, to show that we are, that our emotions. Sometimes we, particularly Brits, are often uh, known for the stiff upper lip that we don't show emotions. But actually, it's important for us to be able to show emotions. So often we spend our life on the outer layer. We look at the outer layer of how we physically look and, you know, is my hair looking good and, you know, is the outfit that I'm wearing, whatever. And we spend so much time on the outer layer, but God is interested in the inner layers. And one of the layers, of course, is our emotions. And, uh, and, and this is what this um, lava, lava, luau is, is all about this week, is about helping children to understand their emotions and we've got to express our emotions. We've got to understand that emotions are a, an important part of our, uh, of our journey of, uh, in our life. And so if we're going to, uh, to have close friendships, we've got to share our emotions uh, with uh, uh, people. We are complex. We have layers to ourselves. And so uh, just as that, we have our, our inner layer, which is, of course, our, our, the core of who we are. Now, we, we will let people know often our public persona, we uh, let people, we, you know, Facebook, you know, social media, whatever, we put on a good front, we let people think this is what, you know, this is us on a good day, and what we look like, but we don't let people know uh, the, the, the flaws and, uh, and all the uh, problems and the difficulties um, on, on Facebook, well, I hope for you don't, but there's, there's that public uh, persona, but then um, to, to, to close family and friends, you open up more, don't you? You and you, you're able to be yourself and they see you the flaws and they see the issues. But there's actually another core that people rarely see and only comes out generally in the tough times in life. And that's your very core where are your values and, and the, the things that you believe and uh, the, the convictions that you have at the very core. And God, God is interested in every layer of us. He's interested in every aspect of us. He's interested in us physically. He's interested in us uh, in, in the way that we, we are physically. And, uh, and it's so important because in actual fact, if you want to be healthy, then friendships are part of that. They're a key to be healthy. Uh, they've done so many studies on this that showing that good friends in life um, will help you with your health. And, um, and, 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 you know, we help each other, I guess, because they bring things out, they uh, show us things, they forgive us things, and help us uh, in our emotions. But God is interested in us physically. He's interested in us in our emotions. But he's interested in our soul. He's interested in our spirit. He's interested in that innermost part. And when God brings a change in us, he starts on the inside and works outward. You know, you, we often work out, outwardly, don't we? Um, as I was talking to a young gentleman this morning, loves to go to the gym, a bit like me. No, um, I, I avoid the gym at all costs. No. But, uh, but God is interested in that. And, and uh, it is in, in, 
you know, important to us that we realize that the layers that God is interested in every aspect of our, of our life. I wonder how you would feel on a rickety bridge. I remember when we went to Ghana one time, Kath and I, and uh, we went on a bridge that was really high among the, the trees. And uh, of course, somebody amongst us started to shake the bridge and, uh, and everybody else got a little bit fearful. I don't know why. But um, so it's a, it's a great picture that Kath will remember vividly. Um, but it, when we face these tough times in life, and all of us have the fiery times, as it were, in life, when we go through trials, we go through tribulations, we go through tests, we go through difficulties and disappointments and all these kind of things, you need a friend to be with you, to encourage you, yes, in the process. And sometimes they need to encourage you to make you to go where maybe you don't want to go or to do something that you don't want to do. But actually, when they've made you get there, you go, oh, yes, it wasn't as bad as it seemed. And so it's important for us. And, and we all have people in our life that, um, that, that maybe we struggle with but it's important that we are become a friend. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2 says this, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. You see, trust is not about an emotion. Trust is about an action. And because God asks us to trust him. And so it doesn't depend on our emotions because you can't control your emotions your emotions can be up one minute and down on another. But actually to trust someone uh, means that it's an action that you do uh, based on their character and based on who they, they are. And so it's important to us. John 14 and verse 1 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. You see, a friend is someone who walks in to your life when everybody else walks out. A friend is someone who stays and encourages you even when other people are talking bad of you. You see, a friend is someone who sees you through when other people are seeing through you. They are the people who, when the, tough, when the going gets tough, they stay the course with you. And so Galatians 6 and verse 2 says, bear one another's burdens. That's why as a church family, we are together to help one another, to support one another, to be there for one another so that we can be all that God wants. You need friends in your life to support you in your spiritual life. You need people in your life to support you in your emotional life. You need people who will stimulate you mentally and be able to be with you and people who will strengthen you in those difficult times. But in order to, be a, to have friends, You've got to be a friend. And so you've got to do that. And so emotions is important. Romans chapter 12 and verse 15 says this. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. In other words, when people are, are, are celebrating, people are having a, 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 you know, they've been a success and people have done well and they've got some achievement or earned something or done something good, celebrate with them. And when people are going through a tough time, you, you, you're, you're sorry with them, yes? Uh, so when people are going through that, we've got to learn to be with people in those times and to realize, you know, I'm amazed at how many times so often when people do well and other people, they're kind of secretly wishing that they hadn't achieved that or that they, uh, they're jealous of them or whatever. Friends are not jealous when, other pe when their friends succeed. They, they are cheering them on. And they're excited about their success. And that's the kind of friendships that you and I need to have and need to be. Amen? Compliments will get you out of a many a fix. <laughs> if you just, you just turn life round and look at the positives and see the positives in people and encourage people, it will make you a friend. Um, and just as he became, the donkey became friends with the dragon and it kind of continues through the, the movie. Um, there's, there's special friendships come together when we compliment one another, when we encourage one another. There's probably nothing greater that we can do than to encourage one another. And the Bible talks about us uh, encouraging one another spiritually, encouraging one another to keep going, encouraging the, the pro 
progress that we've made, uh, encouraging people and celebrating those things and seeing uh, what has been achieved and, and what they are, they are doing because it will make a difference. So when people come in uh, into, to your life, uh, come into your, to your house or in the workplace or in, in school or university, if you will learn just to be an encourager, it will open up doors and it will open up friendships and allow you to share the gospel. It will allow you to, to, to uh, build, as it were, a bridge over uh, into situations that you never would have been able to do otherwise. Can I just encourage you with that? Encourage one another and build each other up, says Thessalonians. And Hebrews 10, verse 24 says, spur one another on towards love and God and, and good deeds. It's so important for us that we really, one of the most important things about any relationship is the ability to forgive. Forgiveness is at the very heart of the gospel because God forgives us. We have done so many things that have, uh, that have displeased God, that have upset God, and yet he comes to us and he says, I forgive you. And so often when we, people hurt us and they can hurt us bad, and maybe even when I talk about forgiveness this morning, you're thinking of maybe somebody in mind, somebody that's hurt you, somebody that's really kind of got to the core. Yeah, you, you, it brings up feelings of resentment or even bitterness. Um, but you know, you're never ever going to have to forgive anyone more than God has forgiven you. God is the one who forgives the most and he forgives first. And my hope is that today, that as you walk out of here, that you would be willing to, to whoever it is that is in your life that has, that has become a blockage because of uh, the way that they have hurt you, because of the way that they've uh, maybe done something to you or said things about you that's maybe, you know, destroyed something in you or hurt you and you feel you can't get over it. Today, if you would just be willing to forgive, it will bring a release. It will enable you to have relationships and to have good relationships. One of the things for us as a church, for Kath and I uh, pastoring the church, one of the things that we've gone through in just our time here, but in our times in the, in the ministry, is we have learned that even when we get hurt, to still love again, to forgive and to keep opening up our hearts. It's a hard thing to do, and no one said it was easy. But all I'm saying to you is, you, the, the new people in your life, some of the new people that come, the strangers that can come into your life, they are the friends that, you, that you've never met, and they can be new into your life. But if you have unforgiveness in your life, it will stop you building healthy, wholesome relationships and stop you being all that God wants you to be and pursuing the quest that God has for you. So my cry out to you is today is will you be a friend that forgives, a friend who is vulnerable, a friend who will do that. If you will, then quite simply, all you need to do is to, is to ask the Lord right now and to say, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you, Lord, to help me to forgive and then put whoever it is there or whatever is the circumstance because if you're willing to do that, it will really open up your life. Amen. Just got one final prayer that we will pray together if you want to, uh, to do that. Next slide. Thanks. Let's just pray this, pray this in your heart. Uh, if you need to forgive someone um, or you just want to, to really just find that release in your life. Dear God, I admit that I've been hurt by other people. My resentment has made me act in ways that have been unreasonable and unhelpful and even unhealthy. Would you give me the power to release and forgive those who've hurt me so I can stop letting them control me? Would you please replace my hurt with the peace of Jesus Christ? I reach out to you today. I want you to put my heart right. I want you to help me face the world again so that this memory can fade from my mind. Maybe today you've never given your life to Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to do that right now. 
It's simply just praying and just saying something like this, saying, Heavenly Father, I ask for a relationship with your son, Jesus. I, th I, I thank you that Jesus died for me. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would come into my life and I ask you to change me. Lord, I don't know it all and I, uh, there's, there's much that I, uh, I'm unaware of, but Lord, I know that you will lead me and you will guide me and you will strengthen me. And I thank you that today that you've put me in a family that will help me and strengthen me and support me. In Jesus' lovely name, amen. Thank you.